Okay, so today what we're going to do, we're going to have a look at two different styles of writing. First of all, detective fiction. And second of all, a piece of romantic writing. <laughs> really? Now, I want you to have a look at it and I want you to tell me what the problem with it is. Brendan, what's the problem with it? There's no punctuation. There's no punctuation at all. What I have done to try and give you an exercise in varying sentences, I've taken all the punctuation out of it. The common problem that's come up with a lot of people's work is that um, we're not varying sentence lengths and using that effectively. For lots of you, in your last portfolio, this was something that came out. Nine times out of ten, when you're writing quite a bit, your writing becomes very, very similar, very familiar. From the portfolio that we've done before, in spring, I saw this was a gap in, in learning. That lesson wasn't just something I fancied doing. That lesson came straight out of APP because that lesson was based on assessment focus five for writing, which is what the APP told me that the majority of students in that class needed. How many of you think that this target is perhaps particularly relevant to your own writing? That's why I chose it. The thing is, every teacher does assessment, usually formal assessments, or maybe once a term. Where APP is different is that instead of having three pieces of work, you've got three portfolios. So maybe you've got 18, 20 pieces of work, which by definition is going to show you in a lot closer detail what students can and cannot do. But the portfolio is where we put all of our work from every single year in, you know, so we can, you know, look back and see how we've done. There's a grid and it has um, the different levels down the side and assessment focuses across the top. And then for each level there's certain things that you have to be able to do to reach it. And he'll tick them off, ones that we can do, and then highlight ones that we need to work on. So when, here, when he's thinking, like when you think, you sort of, it goes really quickly and, and you can't control it. So I think this should definitely be faster. And this, because he's sort of slower. recapping yeah. what's happening, it should, it should be, be slower. Yeah. If you put something like maybe dot, 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 because it's like he's thinking he's yeah. staggering. I'm, I'm at level seven for writing and a six plus seven for reading. I'm a six for both of them. I think mine's more but technically yeah. accurate when I come to writing. Yeah, I need to work on more technical things to put into my writing. Through using this portfolio, we're able to break writing down into its composite skills. And students are able to say, OK, so I'm a level five writer. The reason I'm not a level six writer is it's my technical accuracy. Or it's this assessment focus five, which is what we're looking at today. It's, the, it's my ability to really vary sentences for some kind of purpose. So it just means that the teaching is a lot sharper. Hopefully, their understanding of the teaching is a lot sharper and that I'm able to have a, a discussion with them based on something very, very, very small and sharp. That's why these assessment focuses are useful. I think it does help a lot um, because you can, just by looking at this, you can see what you need to do and, and also it sort of boosts your confidence because you can see what you can do already. There was someone in the bathroom. My gun was already chained on his head when he came out. Uh, one out, comma. Those students knew where that lesson came from rather than me just plucking it out of the air somewhere. And you also saw a great deal of questioning and probing students that I knew needed that assessment focus. It wasn't a gut feeling. I knew where those students were sitting and who they were. So I was able to target questions to specific students. When you choose to put a semicolon in here, because you're beginning to list something, you're absolutely right. But w think about the pace. Think about the pace of this writing. Because there'll be parts of this that you want the reader to read quicker than others. And as far as personalised learning, it, it's putting them in the driving seat, really. And that's really important, because what I want is for them to make progress across the course of a term. So by definition, I need them to be making progress within that hour. What I want you to think about is the juxtaposition of the long and the short sentences. That's the first thing. I want to see some level of contrast there. OK? And the next thing I want you to think about as well is how you're using the range of punctuation to control how the reader reads this. Right. My gun was already trained on his head when he came out. One twitch from my trigger finger and he had been... Yeah. Because it's so so much go there, it sort of changes the sense. Yeah, because it it's changes the pace of it. 
all they're doing is putting punctuation into specific areas, which on the face of it is a rather simplistic task. But what I've done in going round is I've differentiated that. So the more able are looking at using a variety of punctuation for a legitimate reason, and that's what the lads were doing at the board. So they are beginning to build in the punctuation within my writing, and the thinking then is that they'll be able to do it within their own when we stop this and go on to that in a later part of the lesson. On Twitch for my trigger finger and you can flop him like a fish on the linoleum floor of the bathroom. This should be a full stop here. Where? There, I think. I'm a level seven and yeah, what are my, tar my target is to do the sentences better. You know what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong um, and how you can do better. And he'd have been flopping like a fish on the linoleum floor of the bathroom. I didn't shoot. Stop. I was frozen in time. Stop. That's very good. George, you've got two very short sentences right next to each other here. Why did you so decide to go for that rather than, I didn't shoot, I was frozen in time? Um, it sort of, it builds up the tension more right. and it's quite a tense bit in yeah. the piece. Right, so you're dead to stop me and stop me dead. Very good, OK. Well, Makes planning an awful lot easier because you don't end up planning those lessons that really you look back on and think, well, that was a complete and utter waste of time because I have a far better understanding of which small focuses to be looking at. If you look here in a sentence like this, we're beginning to get choices of words. Yeah, yeah. Words here, the repetition of this fricative F sound, finger yeah, and yeah. flopping and fish, which gives us a real sense of the kind of, of, of what exactly is going on. Now you're at the stage now where you've achieved this because you are varying your sentences. The next thing for you to do is to think about the choices of words you use within yeah. those sentences because they're going to have a particular effect. It's formative assessment because it's informing teaching. It's summative assessment because it's given you the grades that you need. APP kind of appreciates those ideas, but it's far more powerful than both of those things because those students come to your lesson, they spend an hour with you, and in that hour they should enjoy themselves and they should leave knowing something that they didn't know before. And if you apply assessment to that kind of model, you very quickly come to the idea that assessment is about progression over a period of time, not necessarily what you call it. It's another lonely day, waking up alone in the flat again. Had another shout out from my other half last night. He's been acting strange. Every time I ask him a question, he reacts like a rabbit caught in front of headlights. Confused, hiding, something. Panics. Um, I'm so confusing. Um, a lot of short sentences. The thing is, when this piece of work goes into your next portfolio, it's evidence that you're progressing on this particular assessment focus, which will mean that, largely as not, your levels should be higher than they were before. That's the whole idea. Ain't it, Sam? Yeah. yeah. You don't have to like go through tests and you don't have to do a lot of revision and stuff. It's just like a few pieces of work all together and you just get graded on it. So. It's like you don't get stressed like you do in a test, sort of thing. I'd say um, yours is a level 5 6. And, um, what did my do to get it? Please, I like it. Well, you didn't like paragraph it. It's certainly more trustworthy than a SAT result. The formality is the standardised tasks, which are now allow us to moderate across year groups. So we're, we're assessing by stage rather than age, which is a bit of a buzz phrase at the moment. Over the course of five years, at this school anyway, those students could have three, four, five different English teachers. And it's important that when you pass their class on, that they can have a look and know exactly the profile of that student. OK, this morning, my um, Year 9 class, they were looking at assessment focus five for writing. That was kind of the objective. So it would be interesting to see what you think. We got involved. It was a stroke of luck. I, I came here three years ago. I was in a conference and somebody said, if you're interested in APP, please stay behind at the end and I'll, and I'll uh, have a word with you all about it. And I thought, well, as a new head of department, I want to be taking things back to my department that, 
maybe they would find interesting. And they kind of grabbed it with both hands and said, this is what we used to do. We used to assess with portfolios all the time and we love to return to that. Yeah. Now this is TIFFs. Right. Spelling, technical accuracy, not so good. But in terms of assessment focus five, towards the end of this piece, I think she kind of... Because that line's good, isn't it? Confused, comma, hiding something, comma, yes. panicked. Yes. It's, it's quite a nice... Yeah, there use was, of, of that. She's 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 trying she's trying to actually construct something that's different, isn't she? I think it's good. I, I'm always confused a bit though about getting them to use a variety of sentence structures, as it mm. were, and then um, and then they don't use sentences at all. So, <laughs> yeah. but good I writers mean, don't always use. Them. Good, I no. agree. Good yeah. writers don't always use them. But <laughs> the difficulty is to know whether they know yes, that absolutely. they're not using sentences yes. or whether they're not using sentences and they yeah, don't absolutely. know that they're not yeah. sentences. It's that awareness, isn't so, it? Yeah. So, what do, you, what, do you, what do you think as far as Tiffany is concerned? Well, she doesn't quite know because she's got a semicolon in the middle yes. of waking up mm. alone. You're right. She's she's not using a semicolon in technically the correct place, but as far as she's concerned, she's slowing me down here. Yes, I know, but you want her to slow you down in the right place. It's right. not good enough no, no. to slow you down for but the sake of slowing you down. It's actually quite complicated, no, right. because if you're weighing up, the punctuation isn't necessarily at the same level that the language is, then, you know, how do you balance it out? Would you give that a six? I'd give it, yeah, I'd give it a six. Now, the first year we did this, I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll give the piece of work like a kind of cursory glance and then I'll assess them all at once. And it wasn't the way to do it. And, and really, um, it was through working with my colleagues and they said to me, look, the, the smart way is to assess them properly as they come in. Then just merely collate the portfolio at the end of the term and then when you fill in the grids, you can get the children to fill in the grids because all the marking has been done already. See, I don't know who wrote it. It was, it was a girl, though, because I remember no, seeing I can, it. It is a girl, I can tell. Um, yum. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> it the, is, the whole way it's written. This the is agony. The, the agony. trance. No, the yes. trance of, of everyday, everyday life, life was a lovely phrase. Yeah. The trance of everyday, the of everyday life. Of the something. agony of wanting something I that I couldn't have. have. Yeah. Emotionally, it's more intelligent, isn't it, than, this, than even this one, I think. Yeah. See, I would, I would think that you could make that a seven rather than a six. I gave it a six plus. Mm. I reckon you could. I reckon you so could. Wouldn't, why wouldn't we give it a seven? Well, we probably would, but I'm always very cautious. Because about... Mel's being pedantic. I mean, I am <laughs> not being pedantic. The thing is, you've got. I am not being pedantic. I'm being cautious. Right. right? Why? Though? I reckon you can give why? that a seven. Why now. couldn't you give it a seven? Uh, see, uh, the, I think for it to be a seven, it should have more accurate punctuation. So high six. She needs yeah. to be able to use punctuation to clarify and yeah, create effects exactly for the right. reader. Yeah, that's exactly right. Because those two yeah. are the most. Yeah, those two are the most important. I've given it a six plus. It's not okay. quite accurate enough. No, is not it? quite. And but as so soon I'm as. I'm not being pedantic. Yeah, fair enough. So, we've had to be flexible, really, and think, well, is this APP really doing for us what we need it to do? And continue to adapt it, because when we do that, our students make progress, are happy, feel nurtured, but feel well-guided, and we feel like we're teaching well. And that's always really important, isn't it?